Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today we're back at the West Shore Sportsman's Association. And for this week's video, we're going to do a head-to-head -head shootout of replicas of some of the most popular revolvers of the cap and ball era. And those are the pocket models. So we're going to be taking a look at this replica made by Uberti of the 1849 pocket model. This was the most popular cap and ball six, uh, five gun actually, but cap and ball revolver ever produced. And we're going to be seeing how it does head to head against its rival, the 1863 Remington pocket model revolver, this one made by Pieta. So we've got Remington versus Colt, Uberti versus Pieta. What's not to like about that? So let's load them up and see how they do. Well, there's no doubt that these little guns were the most popular guns of the cap and ball era. The Remington New Model Pocket Revolver was made from 1865 until 1875, uh, though most of them were actually made as cartridge conversions, uh, 32 caliber cartridge conversions. But about 25,000 were made in all. And the Colt 1849 Pocket Model is the most popular cap and ball revolver made in the 19th century. It was made from 1850 to 1873, and over 280,000 of these little guns were manufactured. Now, unfortunately, I don't have originals of these pocket models to use in the shootout. So we're going to be using replicas made in Italy. And for the 1865, for some reason called 1863 here in the replica market, uh, we've got a gun made by Pieta. And for the Colt pocket model, we have a replica made by Uberti. So let's get the, uh, the Remington clone loaded up and see what it can do. Before I load them, I'm actually going to grease the base pin and arbor with this gun butter. And this is a lube made by Blackie Thomas. Uh, and Blackie has an excellent YouTube channel. So if you're not familiar with them, you really should be. So I'm going to remove the cylinder. And I'm just going to put some of this on the pin. And then we'll put the cylinder back in. And we will see how that carries us through. Got to get it lined up. Hold on. There we go. Little guns, hard to get them lined up. So we'll see how that carries us through with, uh, you know, keeping it from binding up from the fouling. And I'm going to do the same thing with the Colt. barrel and I'm just going to butter this up and Blackie makes this himself it's homemade he also makes a bullet lube that I've been using and quite good oh you know what it might help if I actually put the cylinder on oh, let me get that done all right let's put the cylinder on now, let's get the barrel back on, and we're good to go. I'm going to load up the Remington. We're going to work with that first, and uh, then we'll shoot these things and see how they perform. Okay, now I'm going to put uh, black powder lubricant over the chamber mouths. Uh, to be honest with you, in the 19th century, they would not have done this. They would have just loaded powder and ball, period. But they also did not expect to be shooting them as much as I'm going to shoot them today uh, because reloading was so slow. If you're in a fight with this gun, you were basically shooting at once, you know, five shots. And if you weren't done with the threat by then, well, you better have some friends around. So this is a mixture of tallow and beeswax. I'm just going to smear it over the chamber mouths. And that'll keep the fouling moist and looser, so the gun will run longer. One more, and we are done. Now, 
there we go okay now we got to cap it now I'm using this gun to the west capper and uh, this this is made by uh, Guns of the West, Dustin Winnegar. And as hopefully you know, he has an excellent YouTube channel. So this is this is shout out day. We shout out for Blackie Thomas. Now we're gonna shout out for Guns of the West. And they've got a store where they make uh, paper cartridge formers and they make these guys. Uh, and they're excellent. I use these at the range all the time. Now, if you're not in the United States, you might have trouble getting that. And a very similar capper is made by my friend Anders Gustafsson in Sweden, and he markets these in Europe. And it works exactly the same way. And they're both excellent products, and I absolutely recommend them. So, you know, there's not much room to cap these things. But I'm gonna see if I can get a cap on with this. And the answer is barely. push it on with uh, with a dowel get it down so we're gonna cap all five and then we're gonna take this baby out and shoot it okay we're gonna shoot the Remington now and we're gonna see how it does Okay, now let's take the Colt 1849 Pocket out and give it a spin. Okay, that's the end of round one. We've shot both of the pocket pistols. So let's go down range and see how we did. So the Remington shot a five inch group and let's face it, these are not target pistols. They got little stubby barrels and the sights are pretty awful. Uh, the thing about the Remington is though, it shot two feet high. In fact, it put one right over the top of the target. Uh, so you're gonna have to like aim at somebody's kneecaps if you wanna get them in, uh, in the center mass. Uh, but of course these guns were designed for almost contact distances, particularly the Remington, so I'm sure at that distance they're not expecting anybody to be aiming. So the Colt shot a four inch group that actually looks better than the Remington group. I mean, I gotta be honest. The first two shots I actually put in one hole. I was amazed and then I proceeded to screw up the rest of the group. Um, this shot about a foot high, a little less. Uh, so aim at the belly button, you know, you'll catch them in the heart. Um, a pretty good, pretty good overall grouping for this Colt pocket pistol. Now, I'm actually going to put my bullseyes lower on the paper next time so I can get the Remington on paper, and we're going to go around for round two. Okay, so just to give them a fair shake, we're going to shoot both of the guns a second time, and we're going to start off once again with the Pieta. Uh, 1863 pocket model.
Colt round two. Okay, I, I gotta confess, I messed up here. I did not move my camera, uh, my B camera, from the Remington target to the Colt target. So you won't have uh, you won't have the film of the bullets hitting the paper. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it that I didn't run down and poke them with a stick. <laughs> I, I am sorry. Uh, I can't believe I did that, but. You can't do a do-over on this uh, when you find it on the editing deck. I, I did not realize it at the time. So we're going to go down and take a look at the results of round two with both guns. Okay, the Remington uh, pocket model did not cover itself in glory for round two. It shot a six and a half inch group. And it was 21 inches above the point of aim. So pretty, pretty high. With the Colt, round two was uh, ten and a half inches high, and we got a four and a half inch group, of which you can see my fault. I mean, if I would hold consistently, it would group consistently. So this gun's actually more of a shooter. Excuse me. Well, this is not what I would call a scientific test, but it's as good a test as I can do with them. And I think, uh, at least from what we've seen today, there is no doubt that the Colt came out on top. It shot smaller groups uh, by actually a considerable margin, and it positioned them closer to the point of aim, so you have a chance of getting a bad guy. Now, to be honest with you, of course, this gun is not designed for 100-yard shooting. Uh, and across a card table, I'm sure it would do just fine. Uh, so. You know, as far as this, what this gun was built for, I think it would do its job, without a doubt, excellently. It certainly could have used at least a little bit higher front sight. And, and every one of these I've shot has shot tremendously high. So, uh, it's the nature of the beast. I mean, you expect cap and ball revolvers to shoot high, but, but these little guys always take it out of the park. Uh, but, that said, it's quite ergonomic. I'm not generally a fan of spur triggers, but I didn't mind it on this. It functioned very well. I got a cap in there. Two caps. Got to get it out. Yeah, it functioned very well. Uh, Blackie Thomas's gun butter, uh, I think, did its job. It's, uh, it's cycling very, very easily. So, I mean, no flies on that gun. But uh, this gun certainly did better. Now both of them suffer from the same problems. The sights are minuscule and the sight radius of course is tiny because of the short barrel. So I believe the intrinsic accuracy of the guns is a lot better than I could demonstrate here just because of those issues because I've got to be able to see the sights and do that now. Uh, still in all, I would not want somebody shooting at me with either of these guns from this distance. I'm shooting at 15 yards which is probably the maximum distance that one of these guns would ever be shot at. Um, and still, they're quite capable of, you know, producing uh, deep killing or incapacitating shots. So, on the whole, this guy won, but they're both good guns. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. I like these shootout videos. They're, uh, they're very instructive. For me, it allows me to get my prejudices out of the way and see how the guns really perform, and, and that's always fun. So if you liked it too, you know, give the thumbs up, make a comment, tell me if you liked it, tell me if you didn't like it, either one's okay, because they both mess with the algorithm, and that is a help to me. Uh, last couple of videos have done quite well, last three, actually, and uh, 
I think you guys are doing your bit with the likes and comments, and I think it all helps. So, uh, I'm going to see you again in probably two weeks. I don't know if I can squeeze on one in next week. And the reason for that is because I have a lot of behind-the-scenes work to do to get the next couple of videos going. So... It kind of depends on what gun I pick. But I've got a bunch of paper cartridges that have to be made. I've got bullets that have to be cast. Um, I just have a, a lot of work to do before I can actually go out and film the next few things I have planned. So uh, we'll see. If I can squeeze one out next week, I'll certainly do that. But if not, I would say within two weeks, you'll be seeing me again. So until then, bye.